ohne noch größere Worte präsentiere ich dann einfach den Basavaraj Savalji ja. von äh, Frappe Technologies, also vom Mutterschiff sozusagen von ERP Next. So, please. Well, uh, thanks, thanks, Lloyd. Um, so, this is my first time in Germany, uh, second time in Europe, and I'm having a really good time. We spent the weekend in Frankfurt. Uh, we had a jog on the banks of Main River. Uh, I'm just, we're just having a great time. So, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Martin and Siebert Media team for hosting us and uh, also for taking leadership uh, in launching ERP Next in Germany. I think let's start with a round of applause for uh, Siebert Media team for uh, hosting us. Uh, so, so most of you already know uh, uh, what ERP Next is, who uses it, uh, why is it getting popular, uh, and things like that. Um, so I have chosen this topic uh, to talk about, which is uh, can we, by we, uh, I mean the uh, ERP Next community, can we uh, disrupt enterprise? Uh, so. So what is enterprise, right, in the, in, in the context uh, of an ERP? So, so companies which are uh, large and which are complex, uh, they are enterprises. Like, you know, uh, there are about 5,000 uh, companies, uh, mostly small and mid-sized companies, uh, which are using ERP Next. Uh, but now there is some traction from enterprise. Uh, and, and by enterprise, I mean uh, large and complex uh, uh, companies. So can we, can ERP Next disrupt uh, that space is what uh, I'm going to talk about. Um, so I've been in, uh, uh, in ERP uh, industry for about eight and a half years now. I've been working uh, as a consultant in uh, Frappe for one and a half years, but before that I was part of uh, ERP Next Foundation and before that I was in Deloitte Consulting as an SAP analyst. Uh, and based on my uh, observation, I would like to share two trends uh, which are happening uh, and, and, and why I think uh, ERP Next might uh, disrupt enterprise. So uh, the first one is the modern enterprise. Um, I have taken an example of one of the companies which is based out of Barcelona. I visited them last year. Uh, so, the, so this company is basically into uh, uh, manufacturing of uh, electric car chargers. So as you can see here, uh, this is their product. It's basically an electric vehicle charger. Um, so if we look at this company, which is basically a manufacturing company, and, and yet 30% of the employees in a manufacturing company are basically uh, uh, en software engineers and working on uh, different technologies. They have built a beautiful application called uh, My Workbox, which basically helps you track uh, how much energy did you consume, how much do you have to pay, uh, and things like that. And, and this is not uh, isolated to Wallbox. Most modern enterprises, uh, they uh, grow very fast, and technology is really at the heart of their operations. It's not just manufacturing, but the, the way uh, uh, they use, uh, the way they consume technology uh, uh, is very different compared to uh, uh, traditional companies. So a lot of companies are very comfortable, or they are getting comfortable uh, in consuming technology, in using technology, uh, and uh, uh, you know, uh, capturing some value out of uh, uh, technology. Um, I also have another example. Uh, this is uh, another client that I work closely with. It's called uh, Bonito Designs. They are based out of Bangalore uh, in India. So basically, they are an interior design company. And even an interior design company has 15% of their employees uh, in technology. Uh, these are engineers, developers, uh, uh, web designers, and things like that. 
so so basically if you see uh, uh, so what really differs and and uh, bonito design got uh, good a lot of funding and what really differentiate them is again uh, uh, technology so they would take a picture of uh, your house uh, or a flat and then they would render how their products would look like uh, for example if we took an image of this uh, room they will render how their products will look like if if you bought it uh, and you installed it so and not only in uh, uh, rendering the images but also uh, everything the interaction from the day you go to their website and uh, uh, register your details till it is uh, the uh, the furniture and everything is installed they use uh, technology a lot so the ma this manufacturing there is interior design you take any modern company uh, they not only specialize in uh, something but they are very very comfortable uh, uh, in using technology so they are not just consumers of uh, our product they are basically co-creators you no more say i know what an erp is i have built it and buy it that that doesn't work so it's it's, it's basically co-creation you work with them um, and uh, build uh, products with them so and they are very tech savvy and they are also uh, open source aware they like to uh, explore uh, how the product is built how does it work and then uh, build on top of it and they are very fast growing so you can't go and tell them i know what you need uh, here it is and use it you will have to uh, work with them they would like to know how does the interior of the product work and they would like to build on top of it so this is how the modern companies uh, uh, are being created this is how companies are working there is also mature enterprise on the other spectrum so this is we have seen how does a modern enterprise look like but now let, let's have a look at uh, the mature enterprise uh, there is a company called neolink uh, which is based out of uh, uh, india again so um, they are a contract manufacturing of electronics uh, they have very well established processes they import uh, uh, raw materials from china and then they assemble them uh, they design them so they have a very complex processes of importing subcontracting and quality and things like that uh so this is not a new company uh this is a, the people in this company have been in this industry for long long time but they they also look at what is happening in uh, newer companies and they want they understand that they have to get comfortable with technology uh, so they are really enthusiastic they are wary of uh, uh, vendor lock in uh, and uh, they are also hiring engineers and developers uh, with open source background and uh, uh, trying to differentiate uh, their offerings uh, so in this how the modern companies are changing and also how uh, the established companies are aware about open source about cloud they see that newer companies are getting uh, huge market shares very quickly so they are very aware of it so th they are becoming comfortable with cloud uh, and with free and open source software so this is our opportunity as a nrp next community in these trends so this is our opportunity uh, because both the uh, modern enterprises and also uh, the uh, mature enterprises would like to work with uh, open source companies uh, with cloud offerings so basically this is our opportunity that we have a good product and uh, uh, you know we are very well positioned to go out and uh, disrupt the uh, enterprise market so what do we need to do uh, this is what i keep i hear about this at least once from rishab every single day is we need to uh, uh, be excellent uh in 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 whatever we do whether it's uh documentation whether it's uh so if you send a pull request with uh, three columns in a doc type it's not going to get much because you really need to know the product there are always two columns uh all child tables have items as a plural so it whatever we do it has to be really really uh, excellent uh, whether it's writing documentation whether it's uh, uh, writing code uh so excellence has to be uh, part of it 
that's the currency which goes in uh, uh, ERP Next community. So uh, with that, finally, I'd like to end my uh, presentation with this uh, quote. Uh, There's nothing as powerful as an idea whose uh, time has come. Uh, and I think the time of ERP Next has come. So I think now the answer is obvious to this question. Can we disrupt enterprise? I think yes. Thank you. Are there any questions uh, for Raj? Yes, please. Wait a little. Been loud, loud enough. Um, I have a question regarding version 12, which has been, I think, everyone's been talking about it, uh, a lot of new changes. And your focus on the presentation was the, the enterprise market. Uh, can you comment on whether you feel that version 12 is enterprise ready? Yeah. Yes. Um, so so uh, we and uh, the core team has been uh, focusing for the first 10 years mostly on building a product which is uh, self-implementable, uh, especially by uh, smaller companies. But then something interesting happened. Uh, you know, India's largest logistics company is using ERP Next. Uh, India's largest uh, fintech company uh, is using ERP Next. India's largest conglomerate, which has three, 350 companies, uh, out of which I'm implementing or have completed about 60% of implementation in one company. We are also uh, implementing in two other companies. This is something probably we never consciously tried to enter uh, enterprise market. It's, it was a pull from their end. You know, they weren't happy with what was there uh, in the market. And you now they uh, discovered ERP Next they started using it. So looking at that, I would say, uh, you know, um, but having said that, yeah, there's a lot of things we need to do. Uh, but we, I think we're just beginning to see, uh, and hopefully it will now uh, explode in terms of uh, adoption. So I would say we have just put our first step into uh, the enterprise market. Raj, as you gave us a lot of room, um, let, me, let me join this discussion a little. Yeah. And hopefully others will uh, join as well. Um, what I, I'm, our employees ask me the same questions. So is this enterprise ready? And um, something that we discussed yesterday already is um, we are manipulating a lot of data through the API of ERP Next, which is Awesome, I'm going to talk about this later. And um, one challenge was with EPNX 12 that an update through the API wasn't possible. For some reason, that feature broke. So you could update stuff on the web interface. You could pull data through the API. You could delete data through the API, but you couldn't update it. And then developers came to me and said, is that an enterprise-ready software where the API breaks? after a major change. And um, my answer would be, this is open source. You're part of this disruption, or you aren't. If you're a simple consumer, you have to take it as it is. It's a free software, so free as in beer. It may taste a little pale every now and then, mm -hmm. but it's up to you to make sure it's a, an awesome drink. and. Um, there are a lot of ways to contribute. There, you don't have to be a developer to be part of an open source co um, community. You can, you can work on documentation. You can work on marketing. We need a lot of marketing in Germany. That's why we have this event. Um, and so, yeah, it's a, a question that in an open source community, I would redirect this to you yourself. What is it that you do to make it enterprise ready? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I, I think yeah, if, if you want to. Uh, so so, so uh, the comment I had was, uh, if you see already most enterprises, or almost all enterprises, run Linux uh, OS, which is a free and open source software. Uh, so it has happened, databases, web frameworks, everything is open source, almost everything is open source. Uh, and I think this is going to happen in applications market also. 
So, so as we see more traction, as we see more partners signing up, as we see more customers using it, I think it's going to get better and better. Uh, so I would say, yeah, you know. Can you tell us a little bit about um, how many people work at Frappe and how much of those hours that you work go into the ERPNX core? There's obviously things like, for example, for CBIT Media, you work and then we pay you for that. Um, let's leave that out. Although some of that is going into core as well, right? So um, how much all, uh, of your hours go into core and how many people are you? So right now, there are about 40 people uh, in Frappe. Uh, about one year back, there were, there were just 20. Uh, and I think in the next one, one and a half year, it will be somewhere around 80 in, in, in my expectation, because we are doing a lot of hiring. Uh, that's in terms of uh, employee strength. Out of 40 people, uh, 30 are developers. Uh, 10 are uh, consultants uh, like me. Um, I think uh, everything that we have done for Cibet Media is in core. We, we have done uh, zero custom uh, development for Cibet Media. Uh, and I would say there's hardly two to three percent which is done for a specific client. So basically everything you do yeah. is for the core. Yeah, everything we do is for core. Uh, we say no. To every, we get a lot of offer to uh, develop custom applications, uh, uh, and we say no. Uh, so, for a long time, I think for almost ten years, it was just ten developers who were uh, developing the product. And the reason why the product evolved to this level was they said no to every single. Uh, uh, so, I after working in Deloitte for two years, I started working in a different company where I did the implementation. That time, Frappe refused to do consulting also. So I had no choice but to go through the source code and the documentation and figure it out myself. Uh, and I did an implementation. And then that's how I ended up joining Frappe. So they said no to consulting also. But now uh, we are doing a little bit of consulting. So I would say 98% of everything that we do, especially the 30 developers, goes into core. Uh, and what we learn, the consultants, we try to put it in documentation and uh, uh, guidelines and things like that. Would it be um, OK to share a little bit about uh, why you were asking this question, what the problems were that you were? Sure. Um, we operate uh, for oh, now three years a consulting business based on ERP Next. I, I mean, I love the product. We had introduced it uh, in 2016, that was, <laughs> not 2006. Um, and it was great, and it's, it's a brilliant platform. I don't have to say, I think everyone knows that here. Um, what we've seen more and more with uh, version 12 is that there were on the master, I mean, there's no longer a master branch, but on the, I'll call it stable branch, there's a lot of issues that came in that felt untested. For the German market, for example, I think this is still open, which is the, the coma, the decimal separator issue, which basically makes the product in the stable branch, not usable for a company here. And now, I mean, Martin, I like your point and also yours, uh, where, where you draw the analogy to Linux. Basically, no one's using the pure kernel, but you use your distro, you use Ubuntu, you lose, use Debian, you use OpenSUSE, whichever. And it makes me think that, Martin, you said, what can you do for it? I think to be enterprise ready, at the moment, I feel that version 12, using it like this in an enterprise, and I'm curious to hear if someone's using the version 12 as is. Uh, so most of my, my accounts, I, I handle some of the biggest ERP Next accounts. They're all on ERP Next version 12. Uh, so yeah, there, there are specific issues. And I, uh, I agree that some, uh, when we say enterprise ready, probably it has to be a little more, um, f you know, the, f the finishing touch has to be there. Uh, but, you know, um, enterprises generally want, they also work with good contributors. So their issues get the priority and they get resolved. So 
when any of my accounts report an issue, <laughs> it, my job is online, so I, I make sure that that issue gets fixed and uh, resolved. Um, yeah, th there are issues, uh, and uh, and uh, if you know uh, Frappe, we focused a lot on uh, improving the documentation in the last six months. Most people don't know this; they continue to just complain. But we have invested a lot uh, in improving the documentation, the English documentation, uh, and the next focus for us is going to be to build a quality control team. So, uh, if you know the reason why we were able to maintain good quality was there are just two to three people who merge all the pull requests. So they know every single line of code that is getting into uh, the core. Uh, we also get a lot of flack from the community for not merging PRs and things like that. Uh, but it's when we know the reputation of the person who is sending the pull request, uh, which also counts a little. So that's how we are able to maintain the quality of the product. Uh, but yeah, there are specific issues which can be resolved. If, if Cbut Media had reported that issue, we would have fixed it in probably a couple of days. I wanted to join. Uh, exactly uh, that. Like we, we found very similar things. Like, oh, uh, they use points, and we use commas, and, and the reverse, and they don't know anything about DATEV. And like, a lot of German special things that uh, came up. And one of the things that we did is uh, we asked them, like, do you have any type of subscription? And actually, they have. And we, we got that ex uh, subscription. And to, to be perfectly honest, we don't need it. Like, we, we had a call and said, actually, I don't think we need that support thing. And what I actually need is I need you to fix those bugs that block us. And that should be fixed in the core. And like, I'm like we are paying, and I don't know where Rushup will would feel uh, confident. I share that, but we we pay a significant amount of money for them to listen to us. So if we submit a bug like this, they at least answer and point us to where we can fix this. We there have been situations, and uh, Mario in the back, who is our product owner, can probably help you understand where our team has decided to fix that themselves and where we tried to impose on them that this is so core that they should fix it. And you need a microphone to, to join this discussion. Um, and I don't want to say like pay for priority, but what you could do is you could at least ask for the where is it in the code where I'm going to fix this comma thing, or where would you want to ask? And I think that FRAP is going to be very inclined to make sure that new contributors to the car um, will become more and more active. So that, and I think like this with the comma and the thing with the API update that I brought up, it's a very simple solution. We need unit tests. We need automated, uh, automatic tests that run for every new check-in, for every new pull request, so that everyone knows, okay, API is broken now, so off you go, fix your uh, pull request, and we don't pull in so many bugs. And it's a, it's a massive effort to, uh, to create those automated tests, and yeah, that's, I'm hoping that today is gonna be an ignition for you to start contributing wherever you can. You wanted to yeah. join? Yeah, just one thing that wasn't mentioned, but which I think is quite important is that um, sometimes we, we like, as he said, like we, we give requirements to Frappe and then they build it for us and then they test it. But for example, we have 13,000 customers and then when I see, they show me what they've built, they test the feature with like two customers and then some errors cannot occur because they don't have the amount of data, but that's something I gave them as an input and they understood what I mean and that's something they, they will work on and I, I think if they try to test these features with a system that's actually like realistic to an enterprise system, I think this will also benefit uh, a lot of the work on the bugs and finding like bugs early on and not once you have it. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give you the microphone. Just, just one addition. Um, if you are checking out ERP Next right now, like you do, or you, you said, 
Uh, one of the core things you should make sure is you need to have someone who's technical. Someone who understands those nitty details of technical problems. If you don't have them, you should get one of those service providers in here because uh, then they will have to take care of that. If you're just uh, the guy like me who can log into a system with the username and password and everything should be fall in place automatically, that's not EUP Next. That's not the experience that we can offer today. It's more of a, I tinker with this software until it works the way I need to, to work with it. Are there more questions or do you wanted to say something? On, uh... No, I just quickly wanted to comment on the, I think the coma thing in core is still not fixed to be honest. We uh, made, we opened an issue, we reported, we actually, we sent in a pull request to fix it. We actually had fixed it for our customers because no one could actually work with it, right? Mm -hmm. Because when you enter five euro comma five zero, mm -hmm. it gives you 550 euros. So in a productive environment, and, and our customers are really using it in a productive environment in an enterprise scale. So this has to be fixed within 24 hours. And I think what we can do for it is basically we operate a fork, which is very, very close to version 12, but we found that in version 12 we have to be further away than in version 10 that we had before. There we could really push through most of the things one-to-one, -one. but now we felt that there's a lot of, especially the localization things, there's a patch, for example, which will always fail in German and, and things like that. Uh, your friction is that your pull request wasn't accepted or you said you fixed it and you gave a pull request and it's... I'm actually not sure whether the pull request went through. I think it's still open. Okay. But we actually don't track it because Just we fix it in ours, in our fork may, and we send in may, the pull request. It may be a, b a little bit detailed for everyone in the room already. But um, like, if you put in... Great, thanks for the discussion. I, I could put my thoughts together. Um, when, uh, when I think of enterprise, I think about a different scale completely. Uh, it's it's mind-boggling. Uh, the last two companies I worked for, uh, just the regional implementation of SAP cost them $200 million each. Um, and that's, you know, that's mind-boggling compared to, you know, what ERP Next could think of at the moment or even the whole ecosystem can think of. Um, just to give you an idea, the, the data warehouse project for one company was a billion dollars over 10 years. And just collecting all the purchase order line item was four and a half million dollars budget. You know, just to give you an idea of what enterprise level um, ERP system does or, you know, what it's supposed to do. Um, so it's, it's quite, um, quite a large scale. Um, uh, well, if you know uh, Viroda, which is... Yeah, I know, of course. I, I'm not debating so I the capability. Hang on, hang on. The point I'm trying to make is um, to, you know, once they have sunk so much money into it, it's not that overnight they'll pull their SAP out and then they'll, they'll put a different system in. It's not going to happen. You know, do you know what I mean? But that being said, there are other enterprises that are growing or in the path to become an enterprise. I think that is absolutely the perfect choice to go with the opening. I'm a big fan, by the way. And the other market I am discovering more and more is um, the tier two of enterprise. So basically what happens is a lot of companies grow by acquisition and they acquire a business here of 10, 20, 30 million dollars along with the plant, the warehouse, whatever, or, you know, 100, 100 people, 200 people, just keep adding to it. And they have a, a very archaic ERP system that was built by somebody local. And what companies are trying to do now is uh, they, they, they know that they cannot go to SAP everywhere. They just know that because, you know, the, the business generates, I don't know, $5 million a year and then they have to invest half a million for bringing the ERP. So that's not going to happen as well. And tier two uh, ERP system for enterprises could be a great place for some, something like ERP Next because it is just good enough uh, and it doesn't have to do more than that. You know, look after one plant or one site or one warehouse or one office or whatever it is, manage one set of books and then consolidate into their um, overall scale. You know, so something that what, what you're saying about the big company in India that, uh, that you're working on, something similar. So it is... You know, I think you are on the journey uh, to get there, 
but I think there's still more, uh, you know, uh, it has to be in a different scale than what you're thinking at the moment. Yeah. I can learn from that is there, um, there's a lot of money that um, in this open source world can be distributed to service providers who are here. And if we together can make sure that the experience is um, similar or good enough, as you said, there's probably, we, we could de um, cut out a zero or two out of your numbers and still a lot of people in this room would feel that it is an attractive project. Um, Raj? Uh, well, one, one last uh, uh, comment from mine. So, so basically, the center of ERP Next Universe is Frappe, um, the company that I work for. Uh, and I work with some of the largest uh, uh, ERP Next implementations. Maybe you can't see it right now, but I can, which is working so closely with so many clients. Uh, yeah, there are some uh, really huge uh, enterprises for which we are not ready, but I'm probably a little too early, to, but, uh, uh, but I can see that they really like what we have to offer. Uh, if you know, Uber also uses MariaDB as a database, which is what ERPNX also uses. Uh, Zeroda has, uh, I think, around four and a half billion GL entries in, in their ERPNX implementation. So working so closely with them, I can see it. Uh, and, and you will also see it pretty soon. So we have to be ready for it as an ecosystem, as partners, as clients. We have to be ready for it to, this is, so if you see on my slides, it's, it's our opportunity, you know. So the market wants us to be there and to serve them. So it's our opportunity that we get ready for it. So, yeah. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks, thanks, thanks everyone. <laughs>